Greetings everybody, Peter Martin here and in this teaching moment I'm going to talk a little bit about Romans 5 verse 20 which says, but where sin abounded, grace does much more abound. And so I'm going to start this off by looking back at the first mention of grace in the Bible. So among Bible scholars there's a law called the law of first mention uh, which implies that the first mention of any word or topic in the Bible is very significant and it actually becomes the key to unlocking the meaning of that word or com concept or topic throughout the entire Bible. So if we want to understand grace then the best place to start is where grace is first mentioned in the Bible and so that is in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8 and it says but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord and so but that's not a good place to start because it starts with but and but is never a good place to start and so let's look at the context quickly and I'm just going to read it from verse 5 Genesis 6 it says then the law then the Lord rather saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart so the Lord said I'll destroy man who I have I have created from the face of the earth and now this is painting a very bleak picture of the state of man it is the worst description of the sin and wickedness and evil of man that I can find in the whole Bible it it says all that the thoughts all of the thoughts and imaginations of man were only evil continually it says that the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great upon the earth now that's that's terrible that is not a a, a good picture that's been painted but that is the stage that was set for grace to make her first appearance that grace entered when sin was at its worst amen and it says in Genesis 6 verse 8 after it paints that picture and it says God even was sorry that he created man and then it says but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord grace was introduced when sin was at its worst and that's because grace is God's counterattack on sin grace is God's power to overcome and destroy sin amen and so let's go back to Romans 5 verse 20 it says the law entered that the offense may abound but where sin abounded grace does much more abound grace abounds even more when sin abounds and other translations say that grace superabounds and that Greek word translated superabounds or much more abound is actually a compound Greek word um, which is something like hyperperizua or something like that but the point is that it's a compound word made up of two words hyper and perizua or whatever it is and the interesting thing is that word perizua or whatever it is is also translated superabound it literally means to superabound so this is literally a superlative of superabound so it is hyper super abound so where sin abounds grace hyper super abounds I'm gonna say that again where sin abounds grace hyper super abounds because grace grace is God's counterattack on sin grace destroys the power of sin Romans 6 14 says sin will not have dominion over you for you're not under the law but under grace that word dominion means power authority control influence sin will not have influence over you control over you because you're not under the law but under grace but the implication is that if you are under the law then sin will have dominion over you sin will have influence over you the only way to break the influence to control the power of sin is to come under grace and grace breaks the power of sin Titus 2 11 says the the grace of God which brings salvation has appeared to all men and it teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present evil world and so as in grace's first mention the wickedness of man was great and that Hebrew word literally means abounding sin was abounding but where sin abounds grace hyper super abounds grace doesn't just increase proportionally to sin it's not like as sin increases grace matches it 
No, grace increases disproportionately. As the level of sin and mistakes and failure and messing up increases, grace, the level of grace increases even more to overflow that sin, to overflow that failure, to overflow those faults. So I want to encourage you to receive the grace of the Lord because we find grace in the presence of the Lord and where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. Amen.